It has been some time since I've taken a look at a new terminal emulator, and for pretty good reason. I've found myself pretty attached to Alacrity over the last year and a half or so, and I don't see that changing anytime soon, because Alacrity is just really, really good. With that being said, of course, that doesn't stop me from taking a look at a new terminal emulator when I find one to take a look at, and that's what we're going to do today. The terminal emulator that we're going to be taking a look at today is called Blackbox, and this is fairly new, and it is a GTK4 terminal, so you can expect this to run the best on GNOME, or at least the newest versions of GNOME. And the reason why the GTK4 part is important is because it allows it to have some interesting theming features. Now, I'm not going to say it has a ton of customization, because it really doesn't. There are a ton of terminals out there with GUI settings managers that have way more options than this does. So, if you're looking for full-fledged customizability in a GUI similar to what you'd get with, like, Terminator or something like that, you're going to be disappointed. And even compared to the GNOME terminal that comes installed with Fedora, it has fewer options than that. So just know going in that this is a fairly new new project so there's going to be some limitations when it comes to the number of settings that you have access to but that being said it does have some interesting things that it has implemented so let's go ahead and take a look at it so this is what black box looks like out of the box and there's not much to write home about in terms of you know, like design i mean it looks like a terminal what do you want from this thing but the cool thing about it is that if you go here into the preferences, it allows you to have access to a few themes. Now, you can get more themes than just this. You have to get them from their online repository or whatever, and that's a that's good that they've allowed you to expand access to different themes. And I like how they show you the preview of what the theme looks like, so you can change the theme, and it changes real time. So. It would be cool if you could actually move this settings thing away from the terminal, which you can't. It stays right there whether you want it to or not. You move this, you move the whole thing around, which is just a little weird because these look like separate windows, but they're not actually separate windows. The cool thing here is that when you select a theme, the whole window changes. So you can see how the theme kind of goes outside of the normal terminal space and includes the border as well. So that's kind of cool. So if you like the solarized thing, you can use the solarized thing. You can also choose other themes like uh, the, the dark ones work like that. And this one here is a little bit different as well. So as you can see, the theme kind of propagates throughout the entire application, except for the menus for whatever reason. It would be cool if the menus would also kind of change color, but I'm assuming that's a GNOME thing. That's just not something that they can actually change. Probably not. Now, other than the theming thing, which is what I found the most interesting, because of course I did, it does have some other options. So you can choose whether or not to expand the tabs, which is something that I would prefer to be completely off, because when you have a tab that runs across the entire title bar up here, you can't use that to drag the window. It just drags the tab, so you have to drag over here. So if the expanded tabs are on, which is they are by default, if you select this part here, if you try to drag the window here by the tab, it doesn't actually work. Instead, you have to do this little piece over here in order to drag the window around, which is kind of annoying. Other preferences, you can show the menu button, show the header bar, you can play around with some of the floating controls, so show floating controls and header... Uh, header... header barless mode. That's not a word, by the way. Header barless mode. Um, <laughs> that means that you can turn off the header bar. So if you wanted to use this like so, turn this off, you would then have something more of like a terminal emulator that you'd see in a like tiling window manager, which is cool. Now, you can get back to the preferences by then by right clicking, we can turn that header bar back on. And you can have some control over what's shown when you are in that header bar less mode. You can control the scroll bars, which means you can show the scroll bars or show, turn them off, which is always a good option. Uh, you can have it so that it remembers the window size, so when you close it and open it back up, the window size stays the same. And then you get into some of the more normal stuff you can control in most every terminal. Things like the font, the cell spacing, the padding, which is always nice because a lot of terminals you don't have actual control over the padding unless you get into the configuration file. You can change the cursor from uh, block to I-beam probably and underline. Yep, those are the options. Easy copy and paste so that you can change it to control plus C and control V instead of control shift C, control shift V. 
I wouldn't recommend ever turning that on. Frankly, get used to Control shift c Control shift v You're going to be much happier because when you go to a different terminal, chances are Control shift v Control shift c are going to be what you're going to need instead of the regular Control c Control v You'll just find yourself being upset if you change it to this and get used to this and not have it in another terminal. And then there are a couple advanced options. So you can turn on pixel scrolling. So scroll by pixel units instead of scrolling by lines. I'm not actually sure why you'd want that, but, you know, it's there if you want. The only other advanced option is to reset all the preferences back to normal. This is just reverts it back to the default settings. Why that really has to be in advanced, I'm not sure, but pro they probably just don't want you to hit by accident or something. So those are all the settings, really. You, there's no multiple profile support here, as far as I can tell, in terms of actually, like you can't choose, have profiles that have different fonts. As far as I'm aware, like that's something you can do in GNOME Terminal really easily, and in most other terminals as well. This one, you can't, it's not there yet. So if that's something that you need, this is not going to be an option for you. So let's talk about a few of the things that I've noticed using this just for a little while. The first thing you'll notice, let's run NeoFetch here. Like so, watch, oh yeah, that's pretty slow. So if we run a time on that, so time, NeoFetch, yeah, that's that was pretty slow. Let me open up a terminal on my computer here. Like, open up here, do time, NeoFetch, like so. Yeah, you can tell that was much faster. And you can see those numbers there. Those are just significantly faster than they were in black box. Now, it's possible that this reason why this is slower is because it's in a virtual machine. So I don't want to bash it too much for being slow and then have it be because I didn't give this thing enough RAM. It has four gigabytes, so you wouldn't think it would be that big of a problem, but you never know. You know, and it has four cores, so whatever. The So it is slow. And I noticed that when I ran an update it, it with DNF, it made DNF even slower than DNF normally is. So that's definitely a thing. So you, in order to use this, you'd kind of have to put up with that. And, and the, I don't know whether or not this is going to, sh to happen again or not. But uh, when I open up Blackbox for the first time, oh yeah, that was much faster. Although you can see it's still spinning up there. And it's still loading. I'm not sure why it's loading. It's still usable. But the first time I loaded it up, it loaded slower than a snap does. Like, it was really slow to load. I'm not sure why it continues to have a, a spinning circle up there next to the name for quite some time after you launch it. Something is going on there. It really should not be that slow. So let me open up GNOME Terminal here. Like so. And you can see that's almost instantaneous. It doesn't have any circles up there and it allows you to drag just like you would normally and this is a very full featured terminal emulator so there's some you can tell that this is a new project i don't want to be too bashy on it it's it's slow the default drag points here are really really small so i would really wish that they didn't have that expanded tab by default they should turn that off and the lack of profile support is still something that i come back to is it really kind of needs because when I mean, a lot of people use those profile things when they're going to use a terminal like this their that profile support is pretty important to a lot of people so that is black box there's not a lot to this but i just wanted to cover it because we're going to see more and more gtk4 stuff come out over the next year or so actually let me show you something like this look at there I'm not, i mean i wasn't even doing anything and that thing popped up like i don't know why but it did so there's this thing has some problems so yeah anyways like I said, we're going to see more and more GTK4 stuff come out over the next year or two as GTK4 matures and gets adopted more by more than just GNOME. As thing as desktop environments like Mate and Cinnamon adopt GTK4, we're going to see more and more GTK4 applications. And that's why I wanted to kind of cover this to see, to kind of show you what a GTK4 application looks like from someone that's not a GNOME developer. So that is it for this video. If you have comments on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon and all my other social media accounts. You can find those links in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the LinuxCast, just like all of these fine people. I really do want to appreciate and say thank you to everyone who does support me on YouTube and Patreon. Thank you so very, very much. I can't ever find the appropriate words here at the end of a video to thank everybody who supports me. I should probably write a script or something, but 
you guys know that's kind of out of my wheelhouse. But anyways, thanks for everybody who supports me. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.